Hi, I'm KS Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Nerdwreck Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the CEO and founder of Dark Moon Comics, as well as the writer and creator of Reign of Chaos, Brandon Calloway, here to promote the comic's first issue on Kickstarter. Welcome, Brandon. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining us today. But uh, outside my introduction, who is Brandon Calloway in his own words? Uh, I am nobody from nowhere. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, really, I'm just a guy that likes comics. Uh, and uh, I'm a huge anime fan, huge comic fan. And I just, I, I'm also a doer. And I thought it'd be really, really cool to create my own fantasy world. And so I wanted to just jump in and, and, and get it done. So I uh, am just a, a, a lover of all things nerdy. <laughs> and uh-huh. so so uh so yeah that's that's me i'm a, pretty simple uh-huh so what is reign of chaos about uh so reign of chaos uh, so ha- have you ever played like the dark souls or most people right now are playing elden ring uh you ever play those types of, of games um those are not my speed but i do watch the twitch streams about them yeah yeah, yeah. And so uh, Reign of Chaos. So it, Reign of Chaos is actually the second title that I'm releasing uh, under uh, Dark Moon Comics. It is a Dark Souls inspired isekai. And so, you know, uh, if you're familiar with that genre, think things like Sword Art Online, uh, that time I got reincarnated as Slime, uh, Shield Hero, just the, those where, you know, Person X gets transported into a video game a fantasy video game world and so uh our main character donovan moore is just he's a fun loving bodybuilder and he gets uh teleported into this whole whole other land where uh he has to become their champion and 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 save them from the uh from from the dark priest he has to become their champion of chaos and so the the world the, this particular video game world is modeled after the dark souls and elden rings style the souls born style of, of games and so um uh, again i'm a huge i'm a big fan of isekais and uh, and the dark souls the from software games are just like my they're my favorite games of all time uh i always you know tell people if I'm playing a game that's not a from software game it is just a placeholder until the next from software game and so uh after I, I you know created my first few comics I knew that uh, I knew that I wanted to do a Dark Souls inspired isekai or, or something something related to just that souls born lore or gameplay style or or, or type of storytelling uh, and so, so yeah, this is, this is, this is what I came to. And so it's, it's, it's following the protagonist, Donovan, just through the land of Yashara, where he has to fight all types of, uh, some typical and not so typical, like RPG style enemies. Mm-hmm. So could you, I guess, collaborate a little bit more on the creative process on uh, Reign of Chaos as a whole? Like, so just a thought in your head to working it out, um, I guess, as a complete story, maybe just doing, now you're doing the first one and maybe a second one. And do you plan on doing any more as well? And then, so you working that out, like outlining it, right? And Mm -hmm. then the next stage of finding collaborators to work with, and then now promoting it on Kickstarter. So I guess, can you walk us through the stages of your creative process? Yeah. So my creative process for all of my, all, all of my, pro- so like Reign of Chaos is the second title that's, that's released. Uh, my flagship is Black Spartans manga. Um, and so like that, that's the first one that I, that I came out with. Uh, and that was last year. It actually, I wrapped up the Kickstarter last year uh, for one and two. And, and I published both both of those. And so, um, and I, I actually, I wrote a few other stories that are in the process of, of being illustrated uh, and that will go to print before the end of 2022. And so, uh, so my, my creative process is always that I you know, start with an idea that I think is cool, that I think I, not an idea that I think, you know, 
people would like to read or 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 that will sell i'm i'm writing stuff that i would want to read i'm writing stuff that i will have fun actually writing and so i start with an idea that uh that has some type of significance or importance to me uh so you know my my background and my, my background educationally is uh fitness so i actually i have an exercise physiology degree uh been I was in the fitness industry for about 10 years and and, and so uh cre creating this main character as a bodybuilder just kind of I, I I thought that that would be cool based off of my my own personal background and then uh because I'm so fond and and have such a love and appreciation for the souls born type games I knew I wanted to incorporate uh just something something like that and so that's where the, the idea of this you know this main character being in this dark souls inspired isekai uh came from and so first I, I start with that idea and then uh I sit down and I start with like who who the character is and start to to build that character uh from so build that protagonist from their you know their their core attributes really understanding who that uh character is and then you know i i actually i start with the whole before i even start writing the script i start with with, with the whole journey i, I know how it's going to end uh and then from there i plan out you know issue one two three all the way through so like with uh with reign of chaos that will be around a 20 issue run with oh, wow. uh with black spartans because it's, my, it's the flagship it's the the thing that i actually spend the most of my time on that is that so i actually have 215 chapters of that uh actually oh, wow. plan, like planned out uh, on, on this this long sheet of you know and i and i, I mean i even have it broken down by volume so in volume one, these are all the things that need to happen. Okay, so this will happen in chapter one, this will happen in chapter two, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so I do all of that before I get to the actual writing process. Uh, and so, which which may, and I even, so I, before that, I'm doing the world building. And so start with this idea, and then really, really, uh, so I try, I'm not rushing it. So sit with sit with the idea for a while uh build the world that i think will be fun that i think i will enjoy and then map out the entire story so that uh you know for the sake of continuity when i'm writing it i want it to make sense um uh, and then and then from there i write a script and so all of the other stuff and i've come across other creators and people who have like have tried to publish their own comics and never actually uh have finished but the part that usually i have a friend that you know has fallen victim to this because he's he did all of the other stuff that i just mentioned but when it came down to writing a script and writing it out panel by panel you know saying in panel one you know here's the dialogue here's the the dialogue the uh the you know physical interactions so what the what the main character not only what the main characters are saying but what they're doing and then the background what's going on in the background and so writing all of that out uh panel by panel uh is that script writing and that it hangs some people up like that it, it, for him it was specifically the the stopping point that he could not get past uh, but so i uh write that script and then, uh, so I I find my artist typically through either Instagram or through uh, like black artists Facebook groups, and and then re reach out to them, start to talk about what their what their process is, and from there we you know we go through the storyboarding phase, and then the line art phase, and then the uh, the coloring. Uh, and then, then the lettering phase, and then, and, and so, it's a it's a long process, mm -hmm. but I I actually love going through it because with every with every step, whether it's you know just from coming up with the idea all the way to the lettering phase, 
uh, I get to, it's like I'm reliving or, or, or uh, rereading or re-experiencing the story all over again. And again, it's stuff I like to, I'm writing what I w- would want to read. So it's, it's, uh, it's fun. Uh huh. So just to touch on um, you writing out the script and then you have this background in fitness and bodybuilding, which I thought was interesting that the characters similar to that. Um, so I guess when you are writing out the script, do you describe it in a way that, oh, he, this uh, Donovan is a bodybuilder or like how how do you describe it in a way that makes sense? for the illustrator to translate that onto the page. Cause it's like, you actually have a background in it. And you know how like in manga and anime, the bodies move really weird and kind yeah. of unrealistic. And it's like, that's not how it works. Cause I actually know how that works. But then again, it's like, it is fantasy, it is fiction. So how much of, I guess, be having that background, like, is it how much of it is realistic and how much of it is just like you kind of just have to let that go? In- yeah. So, I, I mean, I kind of I kind of let it go. Like, we, so when because I, I guess I, I did skip the fact that before we get to like actually illustrating the script, we like I, I'm working with I, I'm, I might work with a completely different artist just on the concept of the character. And so mm-hmm. uh, so I'm t- so it's me and this other artist talking about what I want the character to, to look like. And so I might have like a physical model of it that I want the character to look like. And so for for this one, uh, I was lucky enough. I reached out to a guy named um, Larry Wheels and Larry. So Larry is actually a world class bodybuilder. Uh, And and so we uh, talked to him about wanting him to be like one of the main character to be modeled after him. And so uh, Larry, Larry was really excited about that. He had never had his like likeness drawn into a comic book before. And so he sent me uh, you know, pictures of himself that I then sit, sent to the artist to just model this character after. And so so that, that's that's usually the easiest way to, to go about like creating that character. But then when it comes to the actual, you know, action moments in the script uh you you do you you do kind of gotta let go of of realism uh Uh which is the which is the 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 great thing about you know writing fantasy when yeah i I have a i have another character so i have another uh 60 page graphic novel that i'm working on or that is being illustrated right now it's called michael and then some when somebody saw the cover of it they they asked like oh is that like the like the archangel michael like yeah well kind of and and then their next response to me was well uh you kind of need to get rid of the beard because angels aren't male or female they're just like they they just exist and like well this is a fantasy world so angels are whatever i say they are (laughs) you know if i if i say all the angels are dogs then all the angels are dogs (laughs) like it's a it's it's a fantasy world so so for some it's funny that some people can't like like that guy he couldn't wrap his mind around it's like oh well, angels are supposed to be genderless uh and he couldn't wrap his mind around the flexibility of fantasy um which i find we especially and he was a writer so i find that really 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 weird uh-huh yeah i think just people have when they see i guess their f- first uh depiction of something and they kind of just have that in their mind forever they can't go beyond the fact that it can be something else right than what they're used to right so how difficult was the world building for uh reign of chaos or if it even was like how did you manage to create a world that is totally your own and integrate the influences like El- like elden ring and um dark souls into it but maintain that uh reign of chaos is yours in your world and not someone else's yeah uh and so the the kind of the thing about the dark souls and elden ring lore is that the like the world is is really intricate and so um and and so it's it's really about like this this world is a bunch of smaller worlds with a bunch of smaller backstories for for a lot of the the different things uh in there and and so i mean it it again goes back to 
really what what I think will be cool or fun or or that would uh, that'll come across on the page and and uh, and look cool, uh, whatever my version of looking cool uh, <laughs> is. And so somebody else might see it and think that it it looks horrible, but uh, you know different different opinions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so I mean really just not as i'm as i'm building the world i'm i'm not thinking about and i'm not trying to uh use a skeleton of like elden ring or dark souls lore and fill in my own things i'm i'm just i'm trying i'm building out the the story and then uh building out the story, understanding the elements that make those games uh, what they are. So like the the uh, the interesting character design, the interesting uh, and challenging boss fights. Uh, and so really incorporating that. But when it comes to like what the lore is and what the world is, uh, still, still kind of built, not even kind of literally building that from scratch based off of things that that I like. Mm-hmm. So what advice could you offer to other creators? You wish someone would have told you when you first started. So it can be when you first started working in comics, it can be um, just maybe, you know, um, pursuing a creative endeavor, endeavor in general. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start, when you first started Dark Moon Comics. So Anything you feel like that you could pass on to someone else that wants to pursue a similar career as you? Uh, don't rush it. Like don't 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 rush it. So you know I I'm an impatient person, and when I launched you know uh, Black Spartans, I wanted to uh, I, I I wanted to launch the, the first Kickstarter almost immediately. I didn't have an audience for it. I didn't like I, I hadn't spent the time building up a following, sharing enough of the like, of the concept art or even or the uh or the finished illustrations of it uh to get people interested and in, and in just even wanting to to read it and especially wanting to you know spend money on it and become backers so uh so don't so one don't rush it uh two you know the one thing i found out about the creator community pretty early on is that everybody knows each other so it's a it like there there are a lot of creators uh especially the like black create black creators we all know each other you know uh and and there are a few uh like well-known people in in the black indie comic space you know so like concrete comics uh like a lot of people like everybody knows lonzo from concrete concrete comics And, and and we all try to help each other and so coming into it seeing uh other indie creators as uh resources and not that oh well if if you are creating something and i'm creating something then we got to compete for you know somebody can only buy like one one book like they either buy mine or they buy yours uh and, and so seeing you as competition instead of seeing you as a resource is actually a, a hindrance. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, be patient, grow your audience uh, and like really see other creators as a resource because those other creators will help you grow your audience. Yeah. So throughout this whole process, did you or do you ever get overwhelmed? Like, does it ever become too much? Like, how do you typically manage your mental well-being? I guess when you're creating um, yeah, whatever yeah. it is that you're creating at that time, but still managing your your well-being and then whatever else you have to deal with, like household or family issues, or you might even have a full-time job um, mm-hmm. outside of this as well. So, like, how do you manage your mental well-being while juggling everything? Yeah, I try. So that's that's another thing in like being patient and not and not rushing. Because, uh, like, depending on how deep somebody wants to get into this, managing, especially like with, with me managing a comic book, so I, like a publishing company, I actually have a couple of writers that write that are you know signed on to write stories for Dark Moon Comics, uh, and so 
<laughs> so I, I find myself, uh, and I like that. Like I, I, my day job is really related to business and entrepreneurship. Um, and so I find myself like one, either really caught up in the business part of Dark Moon Comics. So in the marketing, the uh, the you know, uh, financial statements, the the you know like sales and 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 lead generation and and all like just all of the the business part of you know running a running a company, and then uh, the especially when I'm working on a new title or if I'm working on you know putting out a new uh, a new chapter or a new issue new book then you know I get really engrossed in the creative part of that and, and so I, I try to make sure that I'm not that I'm not doing both at the same mm-hmm. time uh, because they both like they both can become all consuming especially the creative part and, uh, and and if I'm burning myself out on the business and the creative part all at the same time then when I'm writing stuff it's not it's gonna it's gonna feel forced, uh, which has happened to me before. I've, I've I've sat like sat down to try to write and uh, have been so overwhelmed and focused on other things, and have been you know started to even see the creative process as the business process. So I'm telling myself like, oh, I got to get out. I got to write a certain amount of pages every day. I got to uh, like I got this deadline, this self imposed deadline that I put uh, that I put on myself. And so uh, I try to try to make sure I reel myself in and not not do that. So I can so if I'm really focused on uh, business, I can focus on the business part uh, and I take time off from, you know, focusing on the marketing and and all of that uh, when I'm actually in that creative process, trying to trying to uh, put out new quality titles. Uh So so how I guess as a on the creative side how do you get out of like a funk or like a writer's block when when you deal with something like that because i'm dealing with that right now and i'm just like it can be overwhelming or i'm really anxious especially if i haven't written anything down in a long time Mm -hmm. like how do you i guess get out of that funk or maybe even work your way back into writing again yeah so for me uh i do i do a couple of things so one i will uh pull up some kind of anime and like anything that i want to like anything i'm currently watching and just binge it and and I, usually that will in, in inspire me it's like, oh man i could do that well, i could <laughs> i could like, i could i could write something better than that and, and uh and that like that might be be an inspiration uh like again i i mean i have a fitness background so i I get really, I get a lot of my good ideas or I feel like ideas that I feel like are good when I, uh, when I'm in the gym. And so, uh, like I'm, I might even go to the gym and listen to anime intros or outros. I'm done that too. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I'm done that too. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I got my headphones in you, you think I'm listening to, to something, something else, but it's, it's, uh, you know, fire force intro or something <laughs> and uh and, and that and so like the the combination of uh like that energy boost and endorphin boost that i get from exercise with that uh you know with, with that anime inspiration from the music uh is, is often is something that help, helps to get me going and once uh, you know i feel like once i'm going but but i do like i have to do that it's like a it's like a jump start like i gotta do it like i can't do that on a tuesday and then come back on a wednesday and, and write if i'm doing that on a tuesday i need to go right into to writing and mm-hmm. then, and then that will jump start it and get me writing something and now instead of focus instead of focusing on like what it is I'm writing, I'm focusing on the like, or instead of focusing on uh, the the uh, the block or like oh I don't know what to do or what to put out there, 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on how excited I am about the stuff that I just wrote and how I want to continue to, to, to build off that. So that jumpstart uh, is, for me, that jumpstart is helpful. Uh -huh. So my last question for you, Brandon, is what is your idea of success? I ask that because as creators, if we're not getting regular paychecks from a full-time job, or making consistent revenue from our art, we're considered failures, or we'll consider ourselves failures. Mm -hmm. Many of us will put our dreams and projects on the back burner or give them up altogether because this career path can be highly intimidating and competitive. So what is your idea of quote unquote success? Uh, yeah, my idea of success is like, I, I want to, but my idea of success is just, is really finishing out the, the first full arc of Black Spartans. Uh, honestly, it was, I mean, it's my flagship title. I love Reign of Chaos, but finishing out the first full arc of, of, uh, of Black Spartans uh, and, and continuing to, continuing to, to, sell, to sell copies. Uh, I mean, I, I have you know, certain revenue goals that I, I want to hit uh, in order to continue to, to, to produce more comics, but I I feel I feel like uh, I feel like I, I I have a plan and a model and a good good enough stories that most importantly good enough stories that mm -hmm. uh, that are are all conducive to getting to getting those stories out uh, to to more people and so like su success to me is 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 sales it is it is sales it is eyes it is audience growth uh probably audience growth more than more than the number of sales is audience growth because if <laughs> if uh if i get you know the more people i get reading the stories and liking the stories uh you know even if it, if it's not supporting me full time uh like i'm the i'm that's what I'm most happy about. If I'm getting somebody who's who is you know hit me up and asking when the next chapter of Black Spartans or when the next chapter of uh, Reign of Chaos is coming out, like that's to me that's success. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything else that you want to touch on about Reign of Chaos that I may have missed? Um, maybe discuss rewards for potential backers, or you can go more into um, Black Spartans if you like to, or anything else that Dark Moon Comics may offer to potential readers. Uh, yeah, so I mean, with Reign of Chaos, you know, it, the the good thing about Reign of Chaos is that it's already done, and mm -hmm. so the uh, the Kickstarter for it is really or literally to support the first print run uh, of it. So, so that that like that's a to me that's a big deal uh, because I know like Kickstarter has some some kind of statistics on the number of projects that get funded but never actually get fulfilled. Uh, and so like, we are far ahead of the curve uh, on this one because we already have the project uh, actually done. It's drawn, it's, uh, it's colored, it's lettered. And, and so uh, literally uh, it's, it's just getting it uh, printed. And so, so there's that, we, we got a few tiers in there for some book like book clubs and bookstores i have i've had a few you know i have a, a few uh a few bookstores that actually carry dark moon comics so what like here i'm in kansas city so a few local bookstores as, as well as a few other bookstores uh, uh around the country are, are carrying carrying uh black spartans um and so we have the the digital tiers if you know digital comics is is the, the the way somebody wants to go uh you know you start to collect too many then and you lose uh lose the ability to store some sometimes and so so like me my my personal collection i have a uh i i love backing different kickstarters and getting those indie comics because uh you find a lot of really good gems in, in, in those indie comics and so i, I have a, a good mix of physical and digital and so i wanted to make sure that i was providing you know the option to get physical uh copies and the option to get digital copies um and and then w at the higher tiers we have um the option to get 
the 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 previously published books and so black spartans one and so even though it's a reign of chaos kickstarter you have the option to, to grab black spartans one and two uh whether digital or physical or even or in in the uh the bookstore format uh so so a a, a package of you know x amount um and then with with dark moon comics you know we we we're we are we're doing a, a, a fairly decent job, you know, enrolling and getting some content made and, and, uh, and, you know, on our schedule for the rest of 2022, we got uh, Black Spartans chapter three that will come out and uh, sometime around July or August, Black Spartans chapter three will, will, uh, will hit. And so that, cause that's, that's in progress right now. Uh, and then around October, November, we have the like the first uh you know every dark black spartans and reign of chaos are both uh manga type but in november we have the first like traditional western superhero comic uh coming out so it's a 64 page graphic novel uh called michael and so it's it's uh you know what michael michael is in this book is half human half archangel uh and so that one's that one's coming out uh, so, so yeah, just follow what we're doing, uh, darkmooncomics.com, darkmooncomics on Instagram and Facebook, uh, and, you know, make sure to, to back Reign of Chaos and, you know, see, see, uh, stay, stay tapped in and see where we're going. All right. Well, again, I want to thank the CEO and founder of Dark Moon Comics, as well as the writer and creator of Reign of Chaos, Brandon Calloway, for joining us here today to promote the comics first issue on Kickstarter. I highly recommend our listeners to consider giving the Kickstarter a look, share, and or back if they can. All of Brandon's socials, as you just mentioned, and Kickstarter will be listed in this episode's details for those who are interested. Again, I'm K.S. Garner, and you have been listening to the Solo Numbered Podcast. Thank you.